right, welcome back to another episode of Tiger Insider or Wildcat <laughs> Insider today. Uh, we are uh, joined today by Coach Ryan Ruffley. He is the head football coach at Washington Junior High School, uh, right. one of our direct feeders to Bentonville High School. So I know you're busy, you got a lot on your plate, you got track, you got teaching, you got football. So thank you for joining us today. And great to be here. Yeah. So uh, <coughs> one of the first questions is, uh, if we get out your football card, Coach Ruffley, and we flip it over, what's it going to tell us about Coach Ryan Ruffley right off the bat? Uh, I'm originally from Fort Smith, um, was able to play uh, football there at Fort Smith Ramsey, and then was able to play some at Southside uh, under Coach Lenny. Um, I didn't get to play all three years because some things happened where I, I needed to work. so I. I Junior and senior year, I, uh, I worked instead of playing football, but then uh, went off to the U of A, um, got my teaching degree, uh, came to Bentonville as a student teacher with yours truly right here being my mentor teacher um, at Walton Junior High. Uh, I was there the last year of Walton Junior High and then I was able to get on here at Bentonville and start at Lincoln Junior High and um, I've been here ever since. How many years ago was that? Uh, I'm in my 23rd, if you count my teaching, uh, uh, our student teaching year, I'd be 24 years here in Bentonville. Wow, it's pretty crazy. So the very first year Lincoln's open, you're there and you're coaching football. And yes. at that time it's a 7th, 8th, and ninth grade building, is that right? Yes. Yeah. Wow. Seventh eight, and we just had, we just had 8th and ninth grade football. Yeah. Yeah. No 7th grade athletics. Yeah. Wow. You've been around a long time, Coach Ruffley. Seen a lot of changes. A lot of changes. <laughs> uh, that brings back some good memories, all the way from Walton Junior High to Washington, the Lincoln, and look how far everyone's gone. So, all right. So, tell us just a little bit about growing up in Fort Smith. Maybe some influences, your family, or let everybody know about your your Fort Smith days. Uh, yeah, it was pretty. Uh, it was, you know, I, I've, I'm one of the few people I think who enjoy Fort Smith. <laughs> Everybody that I know has moved away from it uh, has definitely seen better days, uh, but love growing up there. Um, definitely had a sense of community, very similar to Bentonville during that time at least. Um, everybody rallied around uh, the schools and, and athletics and um, I didn't play a lot of like Pee Wee Boys Club stuff, but when you got into the junior highs, uh, it was uh, it was definitely supported. Uh, and then coming here, it, it was it just kind of carried on. And I think I, when I came here to Bentonville is when things really started to. It seems like the community started supporting athletics a little bit more and and things like that. So it. it it wasn't a huge change coming from Fort Smith to being here in Bentonville, but uh, my dad still lives down there, um, and I uh, see him, you know, a couple of times a week when he comes up and and things like that. And yeah, I still got a little tie there, but most of the people I know have moved on. All right. So, but do you have anybody that stands out as an influence back in your days of Fort Smith growing up when you started playing sports in junior high, or maybe a coach or a teacher? Or uh, one 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 man I would say for sure um, was you know because I wasn't good enough to make the junior high basketball team, so I played boys and girls club, and um, there was a man there by the name of Adam Webster who was uh, uh, a guy that was. He coached, I don't know how many sports he coached, but I was able to be under him. He actually played for um, St. Anne's, which was the Catholic school in Fort Smith back in the back in the 60s and played with like Martin Bercher and who was uh, All-American at the U of A. And he, he meant a lot to me because he, uh, he very supportive. Um, um, he congratulated me when I graduated high school and, and kept in touch even after playing for him just a little bit. And then uh, being, you know, being able to play for Coach Lenny uh, and um, Coach Limley at Southside, those were, those were guys that I felt like truly cared about, you know, the kids that they were dealing with. So I would say probably those three. Cool. Oh, and Coach Whitson the basketball football coach at Ramsey. He was a good guy. Unfortunately, we lost him to an accident, uh, but he was he was definitely someone that, you know, was an influence as well. Cool. I know you're busy. I know you run around because you have kids at home and yes. I think you were just telling the story outside before we got started about going to Rector, Arkansas yesterday. So tell us a little bit about your family and all the different ways that you're pulled and go watch your kids and so. Uh, I have three kids. They're 17, 15, and 12. 
uh, about to turn 18 and 16 here in the summer and uh, the middle one's big into volleyball and uh, she's finishing her ninth grade year and uh, the other one just competed in the 2A state tournament in Rector, which is a long way over there from here. Um, but it, it's, a, it's a very interesting area, a very neat community. They definitely get around their athletics and support everything going on there. Uh, my youngest, my son, he's kind of big into basketball, trying to learn the game. Um, and yeah, we do whatever they need to do and we get around. My wife's a realtor, she's a hairdresser. She she runs some of our rental houses. She she does about everything, and uh, and I do what I'm told. <laughs> That's good. You're a good husband mm -hmm. if you're doing that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Good. All right. So besides being a football coach, and I know you do track as well over at Washington uh, currently, what are wh what do you teach? What do you do in the classroom? What's that part of your job look like? Because it's a major part of your job. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I, I tell people in Bentonville, and if you can't teach, you probably can't work here very well, very long at least. Um, but right now, I'm teaching seventh grade social studies, which is geography. We're we're about to transition to uh, part of American history. Um, I've taught ninth grade, I've taught eighth grade, and now I'm currently in seventh grade, which is it's it's pretty enjoyable. So yeah, that's where I'm sitting right now. Social studies. Mm -hmm. All right. I think that you're kind of the first line when you seventh and eighth grade coaches. You know, it's the first experience of school ball. You know, and it's that influence. So it's an important part of the progression of becoming a tiger. So talk a little bit about that. Some of the things that you do to make sure that the experience is good. And I know you have four other coaches, football coaches, on your staff over there. Mm -hmm. So uh, we try to we try to. Uh, Definitely when it comes to the way we run our program was we try to give them an idea of what it's going to be like when they get up here. Um, I definitely come to the understanding that we are a stepping stone and from our weight program to how we run practice to what we run, how we call things, uh, is has got a lot of tiger on it. So that when they come up here, my whole goal is to make sure that Eighth graders, when they come up here in ninth grade, that they have a chance to compete uh, for playing time uh, by knowing what's expected of them uh, and have maybe an idea of, oh, I know what that means because we did it at Washington. Uh, and so it's all about trying to prepare them for the next level to come up here to be a Tiger, um, whether that's off season, in season, classroom, whatever it may be. It's, it's meant to prepare them to be a tiger. Not that we don't want them to be good wildcats, but sure. we understand that they're going to go on uh, and we want them to have the best shot at trying to win a state championship. It's cool. It's an important piece of the puzzle for sure. Uh, and in some ways we also try to teach the parents because they're coming in first time of school ball and we get to break a lot of hearts sometimes with parents more than kids sometimes because things aren't the way. So we, you know, we try to help them along to understand the process of what's going to happen. It's good. Like, like I was saying, it's super important part of our success at all of our levels is, you know, what we are able to do at Washington Junior High and Fulbright Junior High and mm -hmm. Lincoln Junior High and go on. So it's a very valuable role that we have uh, and the coaches there are super important. So what's maybe a favorite part of your job? Favorite part of the job? Um, uh, I'm, I like practice a lot. Uh, and um, I like off season the first few weeks, and then after that, uh, I could do something else probably. But uh, definitely being in season, being in practice, uh, being on on the practice field is probably the thing I enjoy the most of, of the job. Uh, but then off being around the kids, when you have when you have kids that understand what you're trying to do, it makes it enjoyable. Yeah. How about one of the most difficult parts of your job? Uh, probably for me just trying to stay organized and being on top of things and being ahead of schedule so that you're not playing catch up all the time. Um, trying to teach and then at the same time, uh, you know, run a program with 80, 90 kids with, you know, over 100 parents. It, you know, you try to stay on top of things so everybody's communicated with and things are going running smoothly. So trying to stay organized is probably the biggest thing for me at least. 
so you've been a Walton Tiger Cub. Mm -hmm. You've been a Lincoln Leopard. I have. You've been a Washington Wildcat. Yes. And obviously you're a Bentonville Tiger. Yes. So maybe a favorite moment or moments during your 23 plus years in Bentonville schools? From Lincoln is when we played uh, Mitch Mustaine at Springdale Southwest. Uh, we lost 14 to seven, unfortunately, uh, but that was an awesome game. And if we wouldn't have got hurt, our running back wouldn't have got hurt there. Uh, midway through the second quarter, we might have had a chance to beat them, but I think we played them closest of anybody that year. Uh, for the Tigers, it would have been probably the 08 or 2010 state championship game because both of those players that made big plays in those games, I was privileged enough to have something to do with coaching them. And then for Washington, it would have been this past football season and the season before and the fact that uh, those one one team got to go to the conference championship game and then uh, this past season we just we just had a great good group of kids that worked hard played hard and had a chance to go to the conference championship just came up a little close so right. those would be the big things that stick out to me you're definitely doing a good job over there because when I get the opportunity to watch you on Thursday nights perform here at Tiger Stadium and I know the the red and white, the, the Wildcats do things the right way, so it's, it's good to see that. Thank and you. it, it de definitely correlates to success on Friday nights in their future. So you're doing a good job, you and your staff. All right, transition some quick questions now, see where they go. So you ready for this? Uh, bring them. <laughs> First job in uh, Fort Smith, Arkansas growing up? Grocery store worker. Oh, really? Yes. That sounds familiar. I think Coach Ruby just had that same answer. Oh, really? Did, did paper or plastic? Oh uh, no, we were we were pure paper. Pure paper in Fort Smith. Um, I'm a little bit older than Ruby, I think. <laughs> That's great. How about your favorite type of food? Pizza. Pizza. And if you're going to eat that pizza, where are you gonna go get it? Uh, locally, probably Bariolas. Outside of here, probably Hadaway Pizza in Oklahoma. Yeah. Well, there's one in Conway too. That's true. <laughs> Best advice you've been given as a teacher, coach, growing up that you kind of fall back on? You know, I thought about that. I, I, you know, more than anything, just be yourself, I think, was probably the best that I could think of yeah. that I do think about often. I like that. Simple. Mm -hmm. If the Ruffley family is going on vacation, and I know you do, where's your go-to spot? Destin, Florida. No matter what? Pretty much. We've that or uh, Crested Butte, Colorado. One of the two. Warm, cold. Warm, cold. Yeah. Get, get a little of each one. All right, Coach Ruffley, we're not a teacher and coach at Washington Junior High School. What might you be doing other profession? I really don't know. Because <laughs> me and my wife were talking about this uh, yesterday. Like, what would you do? And I was like, I have no idea. I said something about a vendor. She goes, you really want to look at numbers all day long? And I go, no. <laughs> that sounds horrible. Um, probably uh, electrician because I learned how to wire a, a barn of mine and I enjoyed it. So I'd probably be an electrician. Which well, is, I know somebody uh, at my house that would hire you if you're an electrician because she would like to have some work done. So <laughs> I'm sure in this area you could find plenty of work if you had that trade. Yes. I'm not going to ask the next question because it would be practice or game, and I already know the answer of what you're going to say because you've already made it clear. Yes, uh, practice. Practice for sure. Uh, what about a hobby that you have? Reading. Reading. Well, mm -hmm. that kind of takes away the next question too because I was going to ask, are you a reader? Are you a podcast listener or are you a channel flipper? Uh, I'm probably all of them, but I like reading for, for the most part, yeah. I'm try to st I try to keep a couple of books going at the same time. Anything you can share with us about something most recently that you read or something uh, that sticks out? Right now I'm reading uh, a, a book on Kobe Bryant by, by Ronald Lazenby uh, and just hearing about how he grew up. Right now we're in the middle of him getting to the NBA, so it's pretty interesting to see his his uh, growth to where he is. He's he's definitely uh, a different guy when it comes to how he got to where he's going. So it's, it's been pretty good. Cool. All 
All right, the last question mm -hmm. is something that I talk about, we talk about in the athletic department is Tiger DNA, and I know you're currently at Washington, but that's where the Tiger DNA starts. So what does that mean to you when you hear that term, Tiger DNA? Uh, I would say that uh, coming in with an attitude uh, of wanting to be good at everything that you do. Uh, because I don't, I don't see how you can be just good at one thing and then let everything else go away. I think if you look back at when we've been really good, especially in football, uh, you've had students that try to do everything that they are involved in to the best of their ability. And I think if you do that, uh, I think you're going to see results, obviously, in, in classroom and everything, but you're going to see those results on the field as well. I don't see how we could have results on the field without seeing it in the classroom, seeing it in the community and things like that. It, it takes all of it to be, to be truly be good. And I think when we've had that, we've been pretty hard to stop. Cool. Well, I know you're busy. A lot going on, so I appreciate you taking the time, coming over, and letting us get to know a little bit about Coach Ryan Ruffley. Well, thank you for having me. Thank you very appreciate much. Appreciate it.